I'm here all this week as Rio gets set to mark six months until the start of its Summer Olympic Games. We'll tell you much more on Friday about the state of preparations. And of course, I'll be talking about the Zika outbreak as well. But this week, I also want to introduce you to some of Canada's medal hopefuls here in Rio. Today, sprint canoeist Mark Oldershaw. Now, he's the fifth generation of his family to compete at an Olympic Games. You'll probably remember his beautiful bronze medal at the London Olympics four years ago. Well, he'll be here, and I talked to him about his medal hopes and about his own growing family. Mark, it's great to see you again. Me too. First time since the Pan Ams. Something's changed in your <laughs> life since that time. Beautiful baby daughter for you and your wife, Anna Mae Pierce. Uh, tell me about Josephine. Yeah, she's incredible. You know, she's my pride and joy. Um, she actually came 12 weeks early, so it was a bit of a surprise and for two us. Two and a half pounds. Two and a half pounds. So it was a bit of a stressful time, but it's it's all worked out really well. And my wife, Anna Mae, has been just a saint and an angel and, and done so well. And uh, luckily now she's at home and we're just regular parents with a beautiful little baby. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, congratulations. How has her arrival on the scene, how has that changed you? Uh, I don't know, it just made me happier for one. It just gave me a lot of perspective and, and a really good balance in my life. And, and now I go to training and I'm very focused on training. I still have the same goals, but I get to come home and have this beautiful little baby and, and a family that I've always wanted. So it's just really balanced my life really well. Isn't that interesting? I wondered if it might soften the competitive instinct at all. I mean, you've been doing this since you were nine, right? Yeah, you absolutely. took this up at nine. Yeah. You've been on the world stage since your world juniors. I guess that makes 15 years at the top of the international paddling circuit. Does it start to think, you know, I've got this other part of my life now. Do you start to think about coming to the end, what's next, or, or not at all? At this, is, is no, that... yeah, of course. It's always kind of on my mind, you know, what, uh, when it's going to stop. And, and you never really know. I mean, uh, 2016 will probably be my last Olympic Games, but, I mean, who knows? I'm not going to say for sure. But it's, it is really comforting to have, you know, this, this amazing family to, to know that even if I stopped paddling tomorrow, I'd still be happy with my life. And, and that's very comforting. And it doesn't take away from my training at all. I think it just enhances it. Good. Well, you certainly have an immediate goal at Rio. I mean, you were pretty clear at the Pan Am Games. You want a little bit of revenge on a certain Brazilian paddler, I guess? He got me this summer at the Pan Ams, but uh, that's what sport's all about, is I, I want to beat him. I want to get him on his home water. And uh, it's going to be a great race. And I'm looking forward to it. You know, the lake where we race in Rio, the, the statue's looking over the lake. You know, it's right in the middle of town, and it's going to be a really exciting time. What are your thoughts and expectations for Rio as host city? I think it's going to be a big party. I mean, it's it's a party town. I mean, obviously we're there to focus on our sport, but as far as the whole games go, I think it's going to be a lot of fun for for the spectators and the fans. That's interesting because again, you know, we're focusing on sanitation issues, preparedness issues, security issues, all of those things. You've been through that before. You hear the stories leading up to the games. Do we focus on that stuff too much? Do you? Think? Um, I think it's just natural. You want to focus on something, and then those are the stories that are coming out. And I think every Olympic Games they have issues, whether you know it's sanitation or pollution or or whatever it may be. And I think it's just natural to kind of look at those those stories right now but I think usually as soon as the game starts you know the athletes take the focus like they should and then there's an amazing story to tell. The other thing that we're talking about in the news a lot these days are focuses on track right now but issues of doping and corruption but that spreads over all other Olympic sports and it just makes the audience cynical in general about Olympic sport. Do you encounter that at all? Definitely there's a little bit of that kind of you wonder and, and people wonder if you know certain athletes or certain countries are doping but for me I just try not to worry about it. I mean just approach it as you control what you do and not what everyone else can do. I wondered if as an athlete you might ever feel some of that cynicism yourself like why bother? Yeah, I think if you start to go down that road, you just get super frustrated and then it's really not worth it. And at the end of the day, all you can do is, is control your, what you do. Well, what you do has been good for some amazing successes thus far. Hopefully, you'll be building on those at Rio. Finish this for me, Mark, if you would, to sentence. My Olympic dream for Rio is? My Olympic dream for Rio is, is to go down and win a gold medal for Canada. Plain and simple. May that come true. Thank you, Mark, very Thank you much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Mark Oldershaw, the canoe sprint events start on the 15th of August right here in Rio. 